Well, I hope that this study in Proverbs chapter 1 this afternoon will be helpful for you. Not complicated. It's not deep. Matter of fact, it's very practical, easy to understand. That's one of the reasons I appreciate the book of Proverbs so much. And that's one of the reasons we're studying the book of Proverbs now on Sunday afternoons for a while is so that we can get some good, practical, easy to understand wisdom from God. God makes it easy for us, folks, to follow his principles in life. And these Proverbs are filled with God's wisdom and God's principles. All right, we've already studied verses 1 through 6. It was one context. We studied uh, verses 7 through 19. And uh, today we're going to start at verse 20. Starting at verse 20. I want to call this, uh, Wisdom Teaches Us, two things. Listen and learn. Wisdom teaches us to listen and to learn. Listen and learn. Good thing to learn, isn't it? My Bible, in my, in my preaching Bible here, it says the title over verse 20 is Reject, or excuse me, the Result of Rejecting Wisdom. Reject, result of Rejecting Wisdom. You know what happens when you reject God's wisdom? You do foolish things. You're going to make some bad decisions. All right, let's start reading at verse 20. We're going to actually read verses 20 and 21 together. They go together in this context. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates... In the city, she uttereth her words, saying. And before we get into what she teaches us and what we learn, we've, we've learned something that the, the, this Hebrew wisdom, the wisdom that God has given to Solomon, he turns this thing that God gives him, this ability God gives him, he turns it into a personification of a lady. And he says, this lady is going to teach you something. So listen to her. Her name is Wisdom. Okay? So Wisdom is going to teach us. And she is, and, 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 and Solomon uses the feminine word. He uses she and her. He uses the feminine pronouns. So we are very appropriately following the teaching of the Bible by saying this Lady Wisdom is going to teach us. Verse 22, she says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. She asks three questions. How long... You simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will you scorners delight in scorning? And how long will you fools hate knowledge? Now verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Wisdom offers guidance to the foolish ones to avoid destruction. To avoid destruction. Have you ever met people who just seem to not learn from their mistakes? Yeah. You ever seen people like that? Mm -hmm. They keep making the same, same kind of mistakes over and over and over. The same kind of bad decisions in life. You ever seen that? It seems as if they never learn. Right? We've all, we all know somebody like that. And uh, let's be honest. All of us have a little of that in us. 
<laughs> Miss JJ's point to herself. We all have a little of that in us. All right. <laughs> Maybe some of us have a lot of it in us. I have been known to make the same mistakes over and over, do the same wrong things over and over. Have you ever done that? You ever been guilty of that? Ah, okay. We got some honest people in here. <laughs> and I know that I know that we all we all know we've done it. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, if you say that you never make the same mistake more than twice, you're not being honest. Okay? If you think you've already got it conquered and you don't make the same mistakes over and over, you you, you better listen to this really carefully, okay? But we all need it. We all need God, God's wisdom. We don't just need to learn from our mistakes. We need to learn from the wisdom that God gives us. God gives us wisdom through his word. That's the main source God gives wisdom to believers today, through his word. God gives wisdom through his Holy Spirit, speaking in your heart, guiding you at a very particular moment in a particular situation. God will give you wisdom from your preacher or somebody else teaching something from the Bible. And, and believe it or not, God will give you wisdom from a friend or the preacher or somebody like that teaching you something that they don't even know they're teaching you. Yeah. They don't even realize that they're sharing something with you that's going to help you, but it's something that God laid on their heart, maybe, or something like that. God uses all kinds of sources. But the main source we get wisdom from is from the Bible. Right? Yep. The main source we get wisdom from is from God's Word. Why do a lot of Christians today not have godly wisdom? Why? Because they don't read the Bible. Because they don't read the Bible. When you don't read the Bible, you're not going to have God's wisdom. Or if you just read it, but you don't study it. Let me ask you a question. Don't answer out loud. I'm going to ask you two questions. In the past seven days, since last Sunday, how many minutes did you spend reading the Bible? Don't answer out loud. It's between you and the Lord. How many minutes did you spend reading God's Word in the last seven days? Now think about that. Now, how many minutes did you spend spending time studying God's Word in the past seven days? And then I would say a very sarcastic preacher answer. <laughs> no wonder there's not much wisdom in our lives. Amen? Amen. It goes for all of us. No wonder. We make the same bad decisions because we don't spend enough time in the God's word to get God's wisdom. It doesn't just come. It just not poof, all of a sudden you're wise. No. It comes through hours of study and labor in God's word, searching and searching and asking for God to guide you in this life. So, Lady Wisdom gives us instruction, tells the simple ones, gives them a way to avoid destruction in their lives. The simple ones. The simple ones are foolish ones. The simple people, he's not talking about somebody who doesn't have understanding. It's somebody who refuses to understand. All right? The world today and psychology today call people simple if they can't understand things, which I think it's mis mislabeled a lot of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, psychology today and psychiatry today is, uh, is something that is used to just put medicine in people, put drugs into people. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. It's not to help them with their problem. It's to so that they don't even know about their problem. They don't, they don't, they can't function in, in society. They can't function in life. But that's another sermon. I'll get off that. But if you look with me at verse 24, 
Lady Wisdom says, well, let's, let's read verse 23 and 24 together. Turn you to my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, words of wisdom from God. Verse 24, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Verse 25, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. You refuse to listen to my guidance. You refuse to listen to God's wisdom. So what happens when you refuse to listen to it? You just keep making the same bad decisions over and over. Verse 26. This is uh, wisdom giving the answer to the person who refuses to listen to wisdom. Refuses to listen to God's wisdom. Verse 26 says, I will, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when the fear cometh. That sounds kind of cruel, doesn't it? But is it really? No. It's just saying, you don't want God's wisdom? Then you get what you ask for. Do you know what the word recompense means in the Bible? We see the word recompense a lot in the Bible, don't we? I'm sure you've read it many times. Recompense means you get what you ask for. You get what you deserve. You reap what you sow. Doesn't the Bible talk about reaping and sowing a lot? Yes. There's a law of reaping and sowing. You sow this, this is what you're going to reap. You sow bad decision, you're going to reap the result of that. You sow a, a life that is rebellious, hard-headed, don't want to listen to God, don't want to listen to, to God's word, don't want to listen to God, God's wisdom, don't want to submit to authority, don't want to be led the right way in life, you're going to reap a life that is exactly what you want. That makes sense? Yep. Makes sense, doesn't it? And it doesn't, doesn't matter if it's a young person like Annabelle or if an old person as old as Steve. <laughs> doesn't matter our age. Once we know right and wrong, we know God, then we have to listen to him. Pro Book of Proverbs is so practical. It just says, you don't want wisdom? Fine. Nobody's going to force you. Then go ahead and make the bad decisions and see what happens. You have to live with them. <laughs> Responsibility in life means that you are responsible for your decisions, right? We all, I know we all agree with that. We all understand that. We agree with it. But God gives wisdom to help the foolish, to help the simple, to help us avoid destroying ourselves, avoid destruction in life. And uh, if you start reading in verse 24 and you go all the way down near the end of the chapter, you find out that wisdom is giving a final warning of what's going to happen if the foolishness continues if you continue not listening to wisdom rejecting wisdom rejecting god god's guidance god guides guides us right here in his word this is where the wisdom comes from let's continue reading uh, hmm. verse 26 again I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and it will, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, a whirlwind's a tornado. A tornado is not anything to mess around with, is it? God says, your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Look at verse 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Uh-oh.
They shall call upon me, but I will not answer. God says that. You know why? Because God offered his help, and it was rejected. Didn't want it. But now that they're in trouble, they say, oh, God, help me. You know, it's like that. It's like the criminal who's sorry he got caught, not sorry for what he did. Yeah. Right? The same principle applies. It's not that I want to obey God. I just don't want to be in trouble. I don't want to be responsible for my actions. I don't want to be responsible for my decisions. I want to be stupid. I want to be dumb. I want to be worldly. I want to be wicked. I want to be foolish. I want to be rebellious, but I don't want the consequences for it. Yeah. Doesn't work that way, does it? Yeah. No. You don't want God in your life? You get what you ask for. Because God says, all right, you don't want me in your life? Then don't expect me to answer when you call. Don't expect me to help you when you need help. Don't expect me to comfort you when you need comfort. You don't want God in your life? Then you don't have him. Period. You can't have both. You can't have rebellion and wickedness and, and refusing God's wisdom and worldliness and all the wickedness. And uh, I forgot where I was. Anyway, you, you get the picture. You got it. You're ahead of me. <laughs> all right. Look at verse 29. For, they, uh, for that they hated knowledge and did choose the fear of the Lord, excuse me, did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof, therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You reap what you sow. For the turning away, verse 32, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso, notice that, when God says but, isn't it great? Yes. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. What a blessing. See, it sounds like God's gotten heartless all of a sudden. And he says, you call on me, I'm not going to hear you. You ask for help, I'm not going to give it. You want comfort, I don't comfort you. Why? Because that's what we wanted. But then God is not heartless. God is just saying there is a law of reaping and sowing. You get what you want. You can't say, God, stay out of my life until I need you. You've heard of the spare tire God, haven't you? The God is treated like a spare tire. Yeah. You only, you only pull him out and use him when you have a problem, when you have a flat. Yeah. God, does, God will not be treated that way. He is not a spare tire. He's either, listen, God expects all or nothing. That's how God works. And God has the right to set that law in our lives. He's God. But I, I really appreciate verse 33 because we're reminded of God's goodness. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. He didn't say there would be no evil in your life. There would be no problems. He said you'll be quiet from the fear of of evil. He's going to help you. He's going to get you through the hard times. He's going to comfort you. He's going to help you with the fear that you're facing. Now, I'm going to give you a test. Ready? Here's a test. And let's see. And, and this is a, a private test, a silent test between you and God Almighty. Every person. It's a private test that only you can take and you and God are the only one ones who know the answers. 
all right? You want to know if you're wise? You want to know if you're foolish? This is a test you do in your mind silently between you and God. Question number one. Ask yourself this question. When I learn something in the Bible that would help me be wise and please God, do I obey it? When I learn something in the Bible that would help me be wise and please God, do I obey it? It's easy to answer that one and say, oh yeah, but, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, uh, some things, yeah, sometimes, uh, unless, you know, <laughs> unless God teaches me something that I don't want to change in my life, I don't want to give up in my life, I don't want to add this to my life. No. If you're wise, when you hear something God teaches you from his word, you'll obey it. That's the sign of a wise person. The opposite is the foolish person. Number two, when I read verses in God's word that reveal sin in my own life, do I turn from that sin and trust God to help me? And then I not return to it? I don't go back to that sin? When I read verses in God's word that reveal sin in my life, do I turn from the sin and trust God to help me and not return to it? Am I wise or foolish? Question number three. Am I wise or foolish? You ready? Am I easily fooled and tempted by the things that seem attractive even though, even though I know they are wrong? Think, think about that. Am I easily fooled and tempted by the things that seem attractive even though I know they are wrong. Only you and God know the answers in your heart. We, everybody here, each of us, need God's help. And God needs to help us to listen to wisdom and obey God's wisdom. There's a simple little statement that goes along with wisdom. Knowledge is knowing about something. Wisdom is using that knowledge in the right way. Knowing how to use that knowledge. There are a lot of smart, smart, smart people who have a lot of knowledge. Boy, they have a lot of book learning, we call it. They've learned a lot of stuff. They've studied a lot of stuff. But then how do they use all of that knowledge? Well, folks, I hope that this little study in Proverbs has helped us look at ourselves the way God sees us, whether we're wise or foolish, whether we're re ready to obey or we don't obey. And we all have a problem with this, the preacher included, every one of us face this same struggle. Everybody here. So let's make sure we grow a little bit today by saying, God, there's something in my life that sh should not be there. I know you've shown me this before. I know God is, he's, he's taught me this before and I'm just not listening. Today, I'm going to listen. Today, I'm going to make a final decision on this thing and today, I'm getting this out of my life, or today I'm going to start obeying you, Lord, when it comes to that. God, God shows you. He'll show you what it is. Every person has something. We all do. So you ask God to help you with that. Let's obey him, okay? Let's pray. Thank you, dear Father, for your word and for your Holy Spirit. Help us to not take for granted the great blessing we have of knowing that you teach us from the Bible 
and your Holy Spirit, your spirit actually speaks in our hearts and shows us what we need to learn and helps us to obey you if we let you. Thank you, Father, for being so caring, so long-suffering, and so powerful in our lives if we will just listen to you and obey you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.